ladies and gentlemen, it is April 11th, 2016, and this is The Daily Code. That was very loud, my apologies. I still seem to be very loud on this mic. I wonder if I should just actually remove this gain that I've got here. Oh well, I hope that's better. Uh, my name's Chris, and this is The Daily Code, and usually we learn to program a little better, and that happens by me bumping my head against some code problem that I've got and discovering something on stream and your help is always appreciated and hopefully you learn something because I always do and today we are going to carry on the work that we were doing by making books from Markdown so you'll remember last stream I wrote a bunch of classes and explained a bunch of classes that I had to convert Markdown documents like this let's see manuscript book to convert lists of chapters and uh, and markdown content like this which is really great for authoring but kind of sucks for presentation into PDF books and uh, and it works very well which is great but what it generates is kind of ugly at the moment let's uh, let me let me hmm. Let me <laughs> render a PDF for you. Let me render a PDF for you. So this is PDF test, and I will just uh, stop that quickly. Oh, I remember. I remember. I actually restructured this, so I can't really show you what it's going to do. Um, <laughs> because I worked on the renderer quite a bit uh, after last stream. And what happened is... The renderer was making a static output file and I changed it. I refactored it quite a bit and now it renders a string uh, of HTML so that you need to write to a file. I guess we could I guess we could modify this test slightly. If we for instance, let me just comment this out and give myself some more working space. Uh, let's see if we say rendered as that and then we get let's see can't really can't really I can use this path this is a bit of a hack because of how I've optimized the renderer and I haven't brought this through to the PDF uh, generator yet the render renders HTML and the PDF generator renders a PDF from HTML so file put contents the file name is this plus book.html and we're gonna put the rendered text there hopefully this isn't too terrible. Uh, draft vendor bin PHP unit, and then we're running tests converter PDF converter. Oh, PDF test actually is the name of it. I hope that works. Does it? Hey, we have a file there. Okay. Um, Reveal and finder. <laughs> a bit of a blank moment there. Anyway. And it renders this. It renders some PDF text. But this actually looks horrible. Um, this is the HTML that's generated. And the stuff is actually selectable uh, as text. But it's all rendered on one page. And what I want, what I prefer, is to have something beautiful like this. Now, uh, a very long time ago, I uh, worked with a great bunch of people, and they introduced me to this book. And this book is uh, a way to learn HTML and CSS, and it is beautifully laid out. Each chapter has a nice page like this. There's great imagery, and the content is laid out very well. And it's, it's really nice, and I'd like to style something like this. I just don't know how with the tools I have, apart from using CSS. And the thing that we've got that generates the PDF from HTML is actually called prints. It's this thing here. Uh, let me open it up in a new tab. It's called prints. You make an HTML document and then you run it through this command line utility and it makes a PDF for you. And the way that you style that is by using CSS. C -C -C um, the paged content module, I think it's called. Paged media. There we go. So I want to do some of the styling now. I want to do some of the styling in the markdown and just get it to work well. So um, 
The first thing I think that would be kind of useful is to be able to delimit pages to say this, all the contents in this file goes on a page or that it starts a page um, or to break content up so that you can say, okay, put a page break at this point and until the next page break, style the content in this way. That's what I want to try and do. So to do that, um, we're going to have to do, I think we are going to have to do page breaks just to begin with. And we can apply some CSS to the HTML document that we have working so far. So uh, this is still a test file. It's not really important to me right now. But um, maybe what we can do is we can say, OK, this book.txt lists all of the chapters in our book. But each chapter, we want to start a new section. And the rendered output of this is going to be an h1 tag. So if we go to our layout template, we can actually start adding some styling here. I want to remove this. and. I could do this in a separate file and I could have preprocesses for this, but I'm not going to do that right now because right now I want to have something that works well. I don't want to mess around too much with having external dependencies for this because they'll slow me down. But let's say every H1 has a page break. So that should look like that. And when we run the test again, which renders the HTML and then the PDF from that, Let's see, open, oh, I'm just going to keep this finder window open. It looks like this. Already you can see, okay, we've got one of two pages. Here's the first page and here's the second page. So our page breaks working very well so far, I think. <laughs> that was kind of easy. Now our pages are a bit big, don't you think? They're, they look almost a four-ish. Um, what does our inspector say? Let's see, the page sizes are, well, that looks like the A4 page size measurement, uh, which is not what we want. Let's go for something smaller, like maybe, let's see, do we change this page with uh, six inches height, nine inches? <laughs> it's been, I've never actually used inches. I'm not even sure if that's the correct unit of measurement. I guess we'll see when we run the test again. Okay, I'm not sure if that's a little smaller. Let's get the inspector up again. No, that's not smaller. Do I need to maybe delete this file before I run the test? Hmm. Hmm. Is that in fact how you size this? Hard to tell. This is still the wrong page size. Okay. Let's have a look at the print documentation. So, oh, 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 you know what? Let me go up here again because I think I've seen just what I need to see. Size A4. Um, here you can do the actual size. Okay, so size is the property that I want, which is kind of different from the width and height, i got to say. Um, I'll keep the width and height in there. I'll keep the width and height in there because um, that says to me that you can size the dimensions of the body element different to, or the page element, different to the output size. So this might be a kind of scaling. I'm not sure though. Maybe I'll just comment them out for them in the meantime and try and generate this again. What do we have now? Dun, da, da, dun, dun, da. Uh, that's much better, actually. Uh, if we change these units of measurement to, uh, it is inches. Okay, never mind. Six by nine inches. That's cool. So I know that's maybe not a standard size across the board for books. However, it is, um, I know one publisher that uses the size book for like their smaller books. Um, and it's, I think it's an interesting start. This beautiful book here, what does this render as? Seven by nine. So not really that much different, to be honest. Not really that much different. So I like the size. I like the size. I'm going to run with this. Now, we're not going to have a phenomenal amount of time, I think, to do everything I want to do with this. Um, 
there we go. I have made some edits to this PDF file apparently. We're not going to have a phenomenal amount of time to do the whole styling of this because this is a very intricately styled book. But let me start small and we can work up from there. For instance, this book starts, this chapter, I assume this is page 12, um, because the numbering here starts at page 13. Even though the chapter doesn't have that style, the pages have this style. So I'm kind of interested to see. Aww. Now it's gone all zoomed out. Mm. I'm kind of interested to see if we can mimic the same kind of page styling. And I was having a look at the docs earlier, and I saw that there was a section on doing this, but it's not as fluid as the Markdown, uh, the Markdown content that we're going to be working with. We kind of have to do it in CSS, and we have to use CSS counters for this, which is not the worst, but um, no, it's not the worst. We can work on it though. We can work on it. Okay, so page. We have some selectors for this. Um, bottom, why is this? Hmm. Let's see, maybe we need to set the language for... We don't have an option to do that. That's... Uh, That's interesting. We don't have an option to toggle this kind of CSS, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to deal with syntax errors here. Anyway, um, we have the ability to do this stuff. So what does that look like? If we just render this immediately, what does this give us? Mm, finder. Yeah, we have some numbers. Okay, that's a good start. I mean, it's an interesting start. Um, what would be good to do, I think, is to say isolate the chapter titles and content and then have page breaks which signify normal content. I'm not explaining that very well. I want headings to be a page style of their own, just like this very pretty PDF over here. I want this to be the chapter title for each chapter in the book. So this must have a distinct styling separate from the normal pages which have numbering and chapter text here and normal text here, normal-ish, which means we have to try and give this a specific kind of styling. So how do we do that? Maybe what we need to do is start injecting some elements into this, which means we need to have custom markup stuff here. And the markup library that we're using is the PHP League, is the common mark library from the PHP League. This one over here. So let's look at a way to extend this with the new stuff we want. Can we... Uh, customization overview. Let's look at an example of this. Okay, abstract inline parser. No, we don't want an inline one. Uh, well, I guess we're going to start with an inline one anyway. Um, well, we we kind of we don't want an inline parser though. We want a block parser. We want to add a special line. Like like have a look here. Have a look here. We want to say something like. I, I'm not sure what the syntax of this is going to be. Maybe um, double square or something to say uh, a page or to say, mm, let's see. <laughs> what is the styling of this going to be? Page theme. Let's do theme. Uh, chapter do like that. And then we'll do, well, I mean, we say that, but actually that's not really what we want, is it? 
this isn't really what we want. The way that we have access to modify this stuff in CSS is to say, we can create, let me find an example of this, page groups. Is this what I want, page groups? No. There's a way named pages. Okay, fine. Named pages. So we can define styles for containers, right? The name of table of contents. And then we can give elements certain, you match elements with CSS selectors and say, you are a type of page table of contents, which means that if we do something like this, we actually have to have theme chapter and in fact, not even that theme. Do we want to do this like blade syntax? theme chapter in theme something like blade template syntax maybe just end in theme I don't know you see I don't want to make this too I don't want to make this too complex is the problem maybe just end Maybe just end because here what we're going to do is we're going to say, whoa, I've gone and done that moon thing. Here what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, open a div and give it a class. Let's just say, hmm, let's just say open chapter. This will open a div with a class of chapter and end or close. We'll close the div, just have a closing div tag, which is cool. So this is a way that we can start to break things up into like title pages. You could say open chapter, open chapter title, open chapter content. This is some chapter text. And here we can say break because we want to be able to do this. This is some new chapter text. So this is great. I think this is great. This is not as invasive as having a markup inside the book text. It's sort of, I don't know. I'm not sure I like the style though, to be honest. I'm not sure I like the style, but we can, we can iterate on it. It's not, it's not final. We can iterate on this, um, which is fine. So, Ideally, we want to have a way to be able to parse these things. And these can even be inline, these can even be inline parses. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. However, in order to get them to work, we are going to have to create an extension for common mark to recognize those sections and to inject the relevant HTML markup in there, um, which is, which is sounds pretty fun and pretty interesting. Um, However, before we do that, I'm going to take a quick break. So hang around for just two minutes and listen to some music, and I will be back very shortly. See you now.